Alrighty, good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. It's great to be in the Lord's house this morning. Let's all stand and let's worship together as we sing His Mercy is More. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. one more time church what riches what riches of kindness he lavished on us his blood was the payment his life was the cost we stood in the debt we could never afford our sins they are many his mercy is more let's praise him this morning Praise the Lord, His mercy is more, and stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Good morning, church family. Happy Father's Day to all your dads out there. I just have a couple announcements to make. Uh, there's going to be a vacation Bible school August the 2nd through the 4th. It's Wednesday through Friday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer for anyone who wants to help with that. We deeply appreciate all help we can get. 
Also this Saturday from 9 to 3 at River of Life, I'll be working my shoes for the water step. Anyone who wants to come to that, we'd appreciate your help. It will be work, but it will be fun. And I'm looking forward to that. Also look at your bulletin for your Bible studies and everything like that that's going on this week. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer for our offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for celebrating our fathers and all that they mean to us and all that they stand for and their love and kindness they give to each one of their spouses and their children and everyone who knows them, Lord. I just hope and pray that they continue to follow you and lead as you want them to do. But most of all, Father, we just thank you for being our Heavenly Father, Father of all, the one who never abandons, the one who is always with us and protects us and gets us through each and every day. We just thank you and glorify you and praise you. May this offering today be taken up in, for you and for our work that we do here, uh, spreading your gospel, winning souls, and bring others to know you, Lord. For we want everyone to know you as we know you. We ask this all in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the ushers come forward. Continue in worship. I'd like to read a little bit of scripture. In 1 John, starting in the second chapter, starting at verse 28, it says, Now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who, is, who practices righteousness is born of him. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God, and such we are. For this reason, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not appeared, and it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him, because we will see him just as he is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself, just as he is pure. Amen. Let's continue in worship now as we sing, leaning on the everlasting arms, and we sing about mm -hmm. the great love we have that the Father has for us as we sing how deep the Father's love for us. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. What a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. 
blessing arms. What have I to dread? What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning. Leaning on the everlasting How deep the Father's love for us vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. finish on that cross. I won't boast in anything but boast in Jesus alone. Let's sing this out verse. And I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom, but this, my this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Amen. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we're so thankful for you. Our last line is so true. This we know with all of our heart, that your wounds have paid our ransom. We're free. 
because of you. He gives us free gift of salvation. We don't deserve it, but he give it to us willingly. We don't thank you enough for that. Thank you so much for being our loving, everlasting Father. May this as we go through the rest of this service, and as we go through the rest of this week, in your name I pray. Hopefully you're excited to be here today as um, we are celebrating Father's Day, uh, this wonderful day, and uh, praying, right, that uh, the Lord will use our time together here today to encourage us as well as to spur us on as, um, as we continue to do what God's calling us to do. Uh, what a what a great day uh, I know that's set apart here today um, that we gather together and it's kind of a it's always a, a a different feeling between Father's Day and Mother's Day right lots of times Mother's Days are always encouraging and sometimes Father's Days always kind of feel like a beat down and I know that uh, that that may not seem the case in your in your life uh, but man that's kind of the way that church life sometimes projects it and that's the last thing that I that I want to do but I also definitely want to point to um, God's Word and so much that uh, that men have a, a high calling upon their life and I don't want to shy away from that today in any in any way um, I want to make sure that um, that if we are wanting to be obedient to the Lord, then I want you to know that it starts with the men in our church. And I want to come out with that blazing right off the bat, right? So I want to encourage you, if you're not praying for the men of our church, you need to begin to do that immediately, praying that God would continue to raise up obedient men to the Word of God. And I assure you, lots of things will become so much better, not just in church life, but in every aspect of your life if we are being obedient to God, right? So I, I want to get all that out of the way so that you don't think that I've sucker punched you in any way today, but that does not let you ladies or boys and girls in any way drift off to sleep today, right? Because today's message is going to be carrying just as much weight for you as well. And I know that in this moment, right, I know that there's a busyness of today and we all have places maybe to go and things to, things to do and food to eat and all that great stuff. That's the reason why we give you tonight off, which gives me extended time for this morning, right? So praise the Lord. Hang tight um, as, we, as, as we jump into God's Word. I am truly blessed in my life as I constantly look back and see that not only was I blessed with a, a great dad uh, that I highly respect and love in, in more ways than probably what I've ever shown him, uh, but very fortunate to have a mom and dad my uh, entire life up until present day, and them both being married still together, uh, assuring you that they were not perfect parents, but they were parents, uh, and we lived under the same roof, and uh, they did raise me up between right and wrong. Um, and, uh, and the choices that I have made in my life have been my choices. Nothing uh, that they ever did would be um, to be blamed on the choices that I've made. But, uh, man, it didn't stop there. Um, I was fortunate enough to have uh, two wonderful uh, examples in grandparents as well as in uncles that have bestowed many, many, many great things into my life. And then also, right, there have been other godly men that God placed in my life that have been spiritual fathers, so to speak, but more importantly, great brothers of the faith. And I can look back at so much of my walk and so much of my time, and a lot of those maybe have already gone on to be with the Lord, but there are others that I would truly, truly hold tight to today that if I needed anything at any moment, I could pick up the phone. Uh, even, even in desperate needs, even in desperate times, even where I may have wandered and fallen short for the glory of God, they would be there for me. And I'm truly blessed to be able to say that 
But I'm also humbled enough this morning to know that I have fallen short in what God's called me not only to be a man, but also in being a dad and a husband that I fail miserably, right? So I am praying today that I would be given grace today and that uh, God's words would be encouraging to me that I just wouldn't be able to stand up here and talk about it, right? That I would truly be able to live it. And I can tell you, I fail miserably at it. And I'm asking you, I'm asking you to pray, to pray for me, right, as I pray for you, right? So today is a great time for us not just to, rec to recognize those who biologically had children, right, but for the men of our church. And I know fathers are an applicable part of that, right? But I know that you don't have to, to actually father a child in order to be a father figure. And I, and I want you to see that now more than ever, not just the church, but our entire world, listen to me, our entire world depends upon men. And I know that just rocks feminist world, right? I know that that just throws us off kilter and we want to preach and proclaim women's rights. And guess what? They are still there. I'm not minimizing any woman here today. What I'm telling you is, is that the reason why our world is failing it's because we do not have godly men. And I'm telling you, that's a heavy weight, guys. I, I'm, fit, I'm putting myself into that category, so please don't think. I'm looking down my religious nose today. I am saying we, as godly men, are failing. And if we want to see changes, it must start today with us. So, I know it's not a good time to recognize you, right? But there's no better. You see, that's the reason why that the enemy is trying to minimize manhood and womanhood. It's the reason why that he's trying to change identity. It's the reason why that we're seeing all the craziness that we're seeing take place with genders in our world because God had a plan and there was only two. I know I can't get down that road today, right? What I'm telling you is it is so much more than just what a political agenda is that actually lives depend upon what God's Word says. And we need to grab a hold of that this morning, right? So, males, right? You were a creative one or you weren't. And if you were a creative one, please stand today, right? 18 years or older, right? I want to get those that are 18 and older, right? Stand, come on, males, right? All men in our church. All right, ladies, children. Come on, y'all have got to do... Right? Come on. Yeah, come on now. We can do better than that, right? Come on. Make them feel loved. Make them feel. Isaiah, you better start clapping. Come on, right? Praise the Lord. All right, so while you are standing, I don't have to do any ob. I don't have to do anything out of the ordinary because women get all the great gifts for Mother's Day, right? So today, today, right, you get to choose both, both baskets. All right, Ashley, get up. I get to boss you around today, pass, right? One or the, you don't have to have one or the other. Get, get one out of each basket, right? Let the Lord bless you as they're doing that, right? Make sure that if you have not hugged these men's neck, even if it makes them so uncomfortable today, please do so. Hug on them. Tell them that you love them. And I want to challenge you to start praying for the men of this church. Right? Praise the Lord. After you get your gift, you can be seated. If you want to go ahead and begin turning in your Bibles, we're going to be parked at 2 Kings. Oh, my gracious. We're going Old Testament today, uh, Forefathers Day. Uh, if you'll remember Mother's Day, we actually were in 1 Kings. Believe it or not, we were in the Old Testament as well. But I believe there's great, great knowledge that we can grab a hold of with this, right? Especially with what's taken taking place in our world today. So I want to pray, right? You keep passing out. It's okay, right? It'll be, it's all good, right? Lord, we do come to you. We're truly grateful. We're truly thankful for this moment. And Lord, I know that there are many hearts that are hurting here today, Lord. I know that there would be many amongst us today that would say that they would give anything to have one more moment with their earthly dad. That they would love to be able to sit down and have a conversation or to be able to sit and talk. Or maybe that, that relationship has never been there. Maybe there are many that are here today that have said that they didn't grow up with a great dad. 
But Lord, believe that there are many that you have placed, whether that be stepdads or, or different people, uncles or grandparents that have stepped in and took over that father figure. And Lord, today I hope that we can see in the ways that you have worked in our lives has been because of you, our Heavenly Father. And Lord, I'm just praying right here in these moments, Lord, not just for those that are here, Lord, but for those that may be tuning in or those that will be watching later on, Lord, that we would be able to take your word today, that we would be able to apply it to our lives and that we would leave from this place changed, Lord. So I am truly excited for everything that you are about to do, and I know that your spirit is the only way that that, ha that can happen. So we just ask you to have your will, your way, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, all right, right. I know we're still passing out, right? Praise the Lord, get in there. Uh, we're going to be looking here, Second Kings, and if you do not know where Second Kings is at, it's okay, right? There's no shame in not knowing, right? Table of contents, flip that over, be able to look at that uh, as we're going to be diving in. Chapter 18, if you notice in your bulletin, I've got just the chapters listed out. Do not panic. Do not panic. We're not going to try to cover all those chapters today. There's just a lot that's going to be coming from from every one of those and I definitely want to start out by saying truly grateful for uh, brother Jay that uh, covered the pulpit last week for me uh, in the word uh, that he proclaimed uh, very very blessed to have him to be able to do that also very blessed for you all to, to, to graciously allow me to go and do some ministry at uh, crown um, at the recovery center there God definitely showed up in great and mighty ways and look forward to to sharing more uh, more of that with you uh, as man ever was 30, 32 men's lives uh, changed and always awesome to see God work in great and mighty ways. Amen. So, with all that being said, right, with, with men today, right, and I know I, I had two pages of statistics, and I just, I, I am a stats guy, I say that all the time, I love those, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna go that route, right, so it's okay, take a deep breath, but with men and discipleship in our churches, not, not, not just here, right, and I, I won't, I won't let you off a hook, right, I'm not gonna pinpoint Bethlehem the entire morning, so take a deep breath, it's okay, it's becoming more and more rare, right? We're, we're actually seeing men in their roles, right? And we even talked about this in men's Bible study Thursday night, right, of why that we're seeing so much of this push, right? And it's not just new to 2023. Right? We're, we're seeing it from, from lots of different times in our areas for women stepping up and doing things that I won't say that they were not created to do, but it was not the order in the ways that God wanted to do, but it needed to be done. And we're seeing so much of our spiritual leadership, not, not just in the churches, but in the home, because most, most dads are not present in the home. Most did not grow up in the way that I did, and, and as fortunate as I was to be able to, to have both of my parents and us to always sit at the table every night, right, and have supper, which my mom prepared every night. There was no, there was no microwave food, right? There was no heat up dinner. She made supper from scratch, right? Praise the Lord. Uh, I, 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 I get on her to her about it all the time, right, that she never makes gravy anymore, and she says, I got out of practice. I didn't know that was possible. I said, practice every day. Just ship it to the house, right? I'll still eat it. But we're, we're seeing so many, so many men in the church. I, I don't want to say be, be, be absent, right? But just think about right now in this group of wonderful men that we have here. Just think about if all of them tragically were to die today. Hope that doesn't happen. Think about if all of those lives were snuffed out before us. Would there be spiritual people left behind because of them? Would there be enough of what's being taught and enough of what, of what we've been breeding into people, so to speak, and as much as we've been leading, as much as our lives, would, would, would our family still be able to be connected? Would this church still be able to go on? Would we be able to move forward in a correct biblical way, right? And I, I'm praying, I'm hoping, right, that we would be able to say, yes, I'm praying and hoping, right, to be able to move forward 
forward with the terminology that we're using this morning, but dads, I really, I really want you to be able to answer this question before you leave here today. Will your life count? And it shouldn't just be a question that us dads here today, right, or just men, right, but every single one of us. Will our life count? Will it mean something? You know, and I, I think about that, and as the Lord pressed that upon in my spirit this week, you know, I, I do lots more funerals than what I want to, and probably some of the saddest ones are as we sit around with families and I say, please tell me what you would like for your loved one to be remembered. How? What would you like for me to say? And then it goes silent. And I don't want to knock anybody here today, right? But just think about that in the moment of someone can live 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years. In a time when we should be able to look back and be able to reflect and nothing comes to our minds. And I know, right, I get a lot of hate mail for making that statement because people say, well, people are grief-stricken, grief -stricken, Brother Kyle. It's, it's, not, it's not that simple. Maybe they... But is that the truth? Should, shouldn't our lives be able to tell a story? Shouldn't our lives be able to, to speak for themselves with ever, without ever a question being asked? And I, I say that this morning, right? To, not, to, not to be offensive in any way, right? I, I'm praying, I'm hoping that according to God's word here this morning that, that we should be able to see that our lives should be able to be lived in such a way that it will count, that it will matter, that our legacy can be left. And I'm not talking about in terms of 401k and real estate and all of that garbage that we bank on. No pun intended. I'm talking about spiritually. I'm talking about that which that matters. And I'm, I'm praying, right, even as we're, we're gearing up here right towards this scripture today, that it is towards men, women, boys, and girls, everybody under the sound of my voice, please know that every bit of this applies to you. Men of God here today, we're engaged in a warfare that is so huge. It's been going on since the garden. And guess what? It's not going to stop until Christ returns. And I'm, I'm praying, right, that we, we see the seriousness, right, that, that we must realize if the Lord continues to tarry, our children will continue to fight this battle. Our sons, my, my two sons will continue to have to carry on a legacy that God established that he set apart for us as men long, long maybe after I'm gone. Now, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how long my life is. I don't know how long it'll be before the Lord comes back. But we should be interested in training them, in showing them the ways of the Lord. And I'm praying through this story back in Judah's greatest king, Hezekiah. And if you've never read anything about him right, I want to encourage you on this long Sunday that you have available. Do some reading throughout this week. Read some more into this story. This joker, right, he warns us of many things that can take place, and yet he does so many great things for the Lord, right? But I want us to be able to grab a hold of those. I want us to be able to see. So men, number one, we've got to start. We've got to begin somewhere, and if, if you fell off the track, if you've not been what you know that you should be, today is your day. Today is do-over no matter what number. It can start today, right here. Here is our beginning, right? Today is the day. We see King Hezekiah, right? This joker is the real deal, so to speak. And I, I hope, right, I hope that if I could live a life to, be, to have the, the same word, so to speak, be, be said of me, right? Verse, uh, chapter 18, verses 5 through 7, listen what, it's, what it says about him. He trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that there was none like him among all the kings of Judah after him, nor among those who were before him, for he held fast to the Lord. Lord. 
He did not depart from following him, but he kept the commandments that the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him wherever he went out, he promised, he prospered. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and would not serve him. He struck down the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory, from watchtower to fortified city. Oh my gracious, right? Uh, uh, such wonderful words as, as we hear, right? Great accomplishments. We, we don't hear anything that, that, that today, right, as we think about those maybe that go before us or as we rate our accomplishment, right? This guy is favored by the Lord because he fit, held fast to the Lord. He held tightly to it. It says that he kept his commandments, right? And the Lord was with him whenever he went out. Could there be anything that could be better said of us today, that today that we could start to put this into practice, that we could begin to hold fast to the Lord if we're not, if we would not depart from following his ways, if we would keep God's commandments? Men, let's start doing that today. Let's begin to apply that to our lives. Let's begin to add this to our daily lives, our daily routines. And if you're already doing that, kudos, right? I want to encourage you, don't back up. Don't, don't sidestep from it. Press in and do it more. And if, you're, and if you're getting better at it, then guess what? Help someone else come alongside you in the same ways. One thing that I see every day in public life that is probably the most disheartening is, is that boys don't know how to be men now. They're becoming more feminine every day. And I don't want to hate on nobody today, right? I've got two, two boys that are growing up faster than I'm ready for. And I look and I see in that entire generation and kids much older than them, even in their 20s, they're more feminine than lots of girls. It's the craziest thing that I've ever seen. And things that I take for granted, right? And if you're in your 20s, I didn't, not talking about you today, right? Come on. I'm talking about people in 633 East Main Street, Lebanon, Kentucky. How about that? I see it all the time. Things that most of us grew up knowing, taking for granted being a part we need to be taking people under our wing not taking it for granted that they know what we know man we need to start today to show the next generation how to be men this is what this is what Hezekiah does he does this for 29 years as he reigns king which is impressive during this time, right? It's, it's the longest reigning king during this time, right? But I'll tell you what sets him apart, not only in following those ways and not on doing what he was doing, right, is that he began to get rid of all the idolatry that was going on. And men, I, I want to challenge you, number two, you must get rid of idols in your life. And there is all kinds of things that we could talk about today, right? There's all kinds of stuff that we can insert. And ladies, guess what? This, this applies to you today as well, right? Children, this applies to you. Hezekiah, he begins his reign as this man of God, and he's just 25 years old. That's pretty young, all right? I know what I was like at 25, and I can assure you, I definitely wasn't ready to be doing anything of that. But this joker does something wonderful, right? He begins to tear down all of the idolatry that's all around him, right? Everything that's within his reach, right? Within his grasp. And he, he does something very, very wonderful, right? At verse 4 in chapter 18, he says, He removed the high places, broke the pillars, cut down the sheriff, and he broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. Now, I know, right, that bronze serpent that Moses made was a way of salvation in the moment that Moses had done that, but people decided to make that an idol, and they began to worship that later on in church history. And he had to tear that down, so to speak. 
Not to mention, he goes on and becomes a great military leader, right? He does a lot, uh, a lot that's so, so overwhelming. But I, I want you to be able to see that this is something that should be taking place in our lives. Right? He cuts down idolatry, but he doesn't stop there. He begins to promote the worship of God. Inviting other tribes, other peoples to come be a part of worshiping God, right? He sparked almost this spiritual revival, so to speak, by, by opening the doors of the temple. He put God's house in order, so to speak, and then he returns the people back to the law of God. He burned for spiritual things to happen. He did all of this not by saying, hey, look at me. He did so in order for God's kingdom to grow. And men, this is where we need to be at, right? We need to not only rid our lives of idols, right? But we need to rid it all around us as much as we're possibly able and capable to do. We need to stand up for godly things. And we need to call ungodly things ungodly. And I'm telling you what that's going to get you. It's going to get you some of those faces that I get when I say it. And it's hard. Nobody likes it, but how much better would it be to get a sad, fa sad face today and get a great face when we meet Christ face to face? How much better will it be to stand approved before God instead of being standing approved before man? I'm telling you, that's the, that's the culture, that's the world that we're creating, and that's what we're going to continue to get if us as men do not stand up for what's right and tear down that which is wrong. And I know I'm using very, very strict language, right? I know that we kind of start getting on our little holy horse, so to speak, and we start saying, but wait a minute, Brother Kyle, we need to do that in love. Yes, you can. You can tear down in love. If you don't believe me, just look what Jesus did. He turned tables over in love. Some of you all get that at supper time tonight. We must be men that not only start and begin today, we must be men that get rid of idols. And number three, we must be men that deny the enemy. You see, Hezekiah, he, he ascended to this throne. He took over, right? And he was almost sandwiched in, in aspects of location in between two superpowers, right? There's Egypt to the south, and then there's Assyria to the north, and there's little bitty old Hezekiah and what God's been given to him, right? And Assyria starts doing all of this military stuff, right? And they start sweeping across the land, and they start conquering and making smaller sort of armies everywhere that they go. But uh, what was really getting them right is that they come into Judah and they start making them pay taxes they start oppressing them and then Hezekiah stands up and he says well, we're not going to do that he refused to pay them and then things get escalated in Assyria they begin the attack and then there's all kinds of great military stuff, right? If you're a military guru, if you like that sort of stuff, read this. There's great things of seeing of how, how the, this battle played out. But he began to show his real truth, his real trust, right, every time that he trusted in God. While Assyria comes in to attack, to surround this city, he does something that I believe that we as men need to do more of. Right, flip over to chapter 19 with me, and let's look at verse starting, verse 14. Hezekiah's prayer here. It says, Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messenger, and he read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord. Listen here, right? Press in. O Lord, the God of Israel, a throne above the cherubim, you are the God. Come on. You alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. 
Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see, and hear the words, right, of the servant Jerob, where he has sent to mock the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste to the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they were destroyed. So now, O Lord, our God, save us. Please, please, from, from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, O Lord, are God alone. Grab a, grab a hold of that. You see, there's plenty of things that are pressing in all around us that want to minimize not just who God is, but the role that he has in everything. And it's all an attack from the enemy, and he's using men and women to do so. Right? And we can talk about it in, in political ways, right? We can talk about it in all kinds of terms that we see every single day where it's trying to divide us. And we need, to, we need to grab a hold of this. We must realize that what we're fighting is not flesh and blood. It is the enemy. It is the ruler. It is the principality of darkness. It is the enemy, Satan. And we, we've got to realize, right, that we've got to deny that. And what's our number one way of denying that? We've just spent I don't know how many weeks walking through the book of Galatians to teach us to this point. We must deny the flesh. We too as men, right, we're very good at buying into the lies of the enemy and to what the world's telling us. We work hard, right? We work hours and we do this and there's got to be some time, right? And all of these things that constantly are just engulfing us to be a part and to do more and to, to, to feed into what the world is telling us. Here, I'm challenging you, right? I'm challenging you just as the Lord is challenging me. You and I must deny the enemy every step of the way. And please know he's not coming just like we see on Tom and Jerry with this pitchfork and pointy ears. There's all kinds of ways that the enemy is constantly attracting us to fall into that snare. But just like Hezekiah, we need to bring our plans, what we think. We need to bring our families, our agenda, our callings that God's placed upon us. And we need to say, oh, Lord, our God, save us. Help me. Please guide me, direct me, show me, make me the man, the husband, the father, the uncle, the grandfather, the mother, the aunt, the daughter that I'm supposed to be. Show me, save me, please, so that not I can be better, so that I can be taken care of, so that I can be well fed, so that my bills can be paid. No, so that your kingdom will grow. Your life has been set apart not just for your good, it's for God's glory first and foremost. And that's what, that's what Hezekiah prays. And guess what the Lord tells him if we're to read on? He says, hey, I promise you that the Assyrians, you don't have to worry about them. They'll not even shoot an arrow at you. Right? They're, they won't even be able to touch you. And guess what? They didn't. The angels, uh, God's angels surround that entire camp. And the Lord goes out and he kills 185,000, give or take. What happens, right? Hezekiah proved something so wonderful that he could trust God, right? In the face of all of these enemies in the, in the world that was surrounding him, that God was able to take care of him. Church, men, we must deny the enemy, especially when we know it goes against what God's told us to do, what goes against his word. If we want to make a lasting impact on the next generation, we need to be men and women of God that stand up and say enough is enough. What God's word says settles it. Lastly, right, I want to I wanna plug in here. Men, you must seek the Lord. And this is one where it really, really begins to, to kind of grab a hold of us here, right? We discover what kind of 
happens to, to Hezekiah starting in chapter 20, verse 1. It says, in those days, Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. Oh, my gracious, right? He's doing all these great and mighty things, all these wonderful things for the Lord. And God speaks to him, right? He uses Isaiah the prophet, right? And he comes to him and says, Thus saith the Lord, you want to talk about a wake-up call? Men, may it never be so that we have to get one like this, right? May it never be that we have to be on our deathbed before we decide to get our house in order. This is what he tells him. Set your house in order, for you shall die. You shall not recover. Oh, my gracious you can can you imagine those words being spoke to you right after hearing this hezekiah he does what i hope that most of us would do right he begins to just cry uncontrollably right it says that he weeps bitterly and he cries out to god and he and he basically begs him look at verse verse number three now o lord please remember how i've walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight and Hezekiah wept bitterly. He begs the Lord for his life. He says, hey, don't forget about all of these great things I've done. Please, right? Remember how faithful that I was and what I've done. Remember the, all the good things that I've done in your sight for your kingdom. And guess what God does? He hears his prayer. He saw his tears, right? And he does something really, really cool, right? I, I think it is. I hope you do. Verse 5, turn back, right? Let's, let's get forward first. He says, And before Isaiah had gone out at the middle of the court, the word of the Lord came to him. Turn back. Say to Hezekiah, the leader of the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. And on the third day, coincidence, Nope, right? On the third day, you shall go out to the house of the Lord, and I will add 15 years to your life. Oh, my gracious. Think about how, how specific that word is that he gets, right? How much would that change you in living today if you knew a timeline on your life? I hope that it would change us. Well, let me give you just a little timeline. Today could be your last day. There's no greater timeline than that. We may not make it out of this room today. Our life lingers in the balance just like Hezekiah's. And even though we haven't got a direct report from a prophet from the Word of God, let me speak on behalf of the Word of God. You're not promised another second. That's fact. You're not promised another moment. You're not promised a great dinner today. You're not promised with the grandkids tonight. You're not promised to go to senior citizens on Monday. You're not promised to clock in Monday morning. You're not promised another second. Your life can be snuffed out in the very moment. What are you doing with the time that the Lord has given you? Men, women, boys and girls, are you seeking the Lord? Are you waiting for these specific words to fall in your lap before you respond and say, wait a minute, God, do you need a wake-up call? Here it is. Wake up! Today is the day. Listen, take heed to these words. We need to seek the Lord. We need to seek him with all of our heart. Not just for healing like Hezekiah did. We need to seek it spiritually that we would be the men and the women that God's created us to do. And I know we're thinking, oh, so far, Hezekiah, this dude is outstanding. He's falling every step of the way, and it is a great status. But let's figure out exactly of what happens, how things sort of kind of go off track. Because in Hezekiah's story, it surprisingly ends not on a good note. It begins with a foolish decision. Hezekiah, guess what? God heals his body, and then he starts doing something pretty daggone crazy, right? He decides to meet up with the Babylonians, and he invites their, 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 their prince in, right? And, and, and while that he's there, we see Hezekiah do something that's pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. 
He welcomes all this Babylonians in, and he begins to kind of be prideful and puffed up and say, look what all the Lord has blessed me with. Right? Look, come on, I know y'all are looking at me like this can't be true, so let's just go to God's word here. Verse 12. And that, right, look, let's see, uh, no, in 13. And Hezekiah welcomed them, and he showed them all, the tre uh, all his treasure house, the silver, the gold, the spices, the precious oil, uh, his armor, and all that was found in his storehouses. There was nothing in his house or all of his realm that Hezekiah did not show them. <laughs> Wait a minute. What in the world are you thinking? This is your sworn enemy, and you're showing them all the goods that you have? It's not too smart, right? It's, it's not too good that he would be doing that, right? And here's what we see that happens in a direct moment in verse 17. Uh, the prophet uh, Isaiah shares some pretty, pretty stout words. He says, Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and that which your fathers have stored up till this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord, and some of your own sons who will come from you, whom, your will, uh, whom you will father, shall be taken away, and they, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Oh my gracious. Just think about just think about hearing those words just because he got a little bit conceited, a little bit puffed up and wanted to show off everything that the Lord had blessed him with because of that decision his children Right? His people that he was ruling over, not only would they be plundered, not only would they be held captive, right? No longer would they be enslaved, right? Any good king, any good father, right, would have just stood up immediately and said, I'm not going to stand for that. Right? They would have, there would be no way that we would say, okay, do what you want to with my kids. Anybody want to hand yours over to someone else today? And I'm not talking about just for the afternoon, right? Because I've got a few that we can do that. I'm talking about for them to be enslaved for the rest of their lives. No, none of us would be, would be willing to do that, right? We're, we're compelled in this moment to stand up and say, no, I'll fight with everything I have to protect my children, my grandchildren, my family, my wife, my friends, right? Those that I am over top of, those that I can possibly help, I will do whatever that it takes. But guess how Hezekiah responds? Does he do like he did before and tear his garments, so to speak, and cry out and pray and seek the Lord like he had done when his, his kingdom was being threatened by the Assyrians, right? Would he, would he begin to cry and weep and, uh, and do just exactly like he did when God said, hey, guess what, you're going to die? Look at verse 19 with me. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, the word of the Lord you have spoken is good. For he thought, why not if there will be peace and security in my days? Oh my gracious, this king had forgot all about his people. This general had forgot about his army. This dad, this father, he's forgot all about his kids. Everything that he had been charged to oversee, everything that he had been given to provide for, everything that he had been called to protect, to keep from suffering to take place, right? Every single bit of it would now suffer, and they would suffer horribly. His own sons would become slaves. But guess what? He'd be long gone by all that would happen, right? And what did he care in that moment? So as we're winding up right here in this moment, there should be a call for not just men, but I really want to put it in your lap today. Just as Hezekiah did all of these wonderful things in one decision, in one moment of saying, hey, guess what? If that's the sacrifice I have to pay for peace for a few years and me not to have to worry, then so be it. 
I want to issue a charge for older men of the faith today, and I'm not talking about your age. I'm talking about that if you've been a Christian longer than just a few years, I don't want us to forget about the next generation. You see, because that's what's happened to this newest generation. I believe that we've totally forgotten about them. Our churches need more spiritual fathers, so to speak. We need them to be present. We don't need them just to show up on Father's Day. We don't need them just to show up when we have a meal. We don't need them just to show up when they feel like coming or when they feel good. No, we need men to be present every time we gather. We need them to be the head of their home. We need them to be leading and guiding in biblical ways, not just in the way that maybe we were raised. We need new pastors. We need new men listening to the Word of God and taking on the calling that's been placed upon their lives. We need men that are willing to pray, that are willing to take the stand that God's placed upon their life that we would never back up from. We need strong men to lead our families in the Lord men to love other people's children as their own. We need men to be men. And I know as I say that, right, it's an overwhelming thought. And I know I'm so thankful for so many years that there have been women that are stepping up and doing what God should be doing through men. And I want you to know that it's greatly appreciated and it's, it's an overwhelming thing. But guess what? It's not what God designed. And I know that messes the apple cart up, right? And I know that that hurts our feelings, right? There's plenty of work for you to do, ladies. Do it in the home. And I'm not talking about cooking and cleaning. I'm talking about with your children. I'm talking about with VBS. I'm talking about with Sunday school. I'm talking about with women's ministry. I'm talking about you taking younger ladies under your wing. I could go on and on and on and on. It may be well with you this day, right, that we could grow up in the ways that God has designed us, right, that we could spend time with Christ, that we could be what God's called us to do. But guess what? Instead, we're laying down and we're saying, guess what? I don't have to worry about it because she's got it. Shame on us. And I know there are many situations, right, many situations where there is not a dad present. And guess what? Men, that's where we step in. That's where we become what God's called for that family. That's where we bridge that gap. That's where we come along and help those that do not have one. If not, we're going to continue to produce a generation where 80% of fatherless homes go to jail. Guess what? That's a real stat. If you don't believe me, there's 500 men that's right down here in Springfield that have some sort of addiction, and I can assure you that 80% of them come from a fatherless home, or their father was just like them. That ought to scare the bejesus out of us, right? That ought to just make us totally uncomfortable that if we're happy with what we've got, then guess what? We're going to continue to get it. We need to be able to see that there are people that God's placing right in our paths every single day, not just in the confines of this wall, but there are people around us that deserve exactly of what we have, someone pouring into our lives. And I'm telling you, speaking from someone who once was a young man that had an older man pour into his life, without them, I would not be where I'm at today. I assure you, I would be far away. So what I'm telling you is, guys, let's don't take off our uniforms. Let's don't lay down the calling that's placed upon our lives just because we've reached some certain age, because we've served so long. No, I'm saying, hey, we've got the scars. We've got the stories. Let's talk about them. Let's say, hey, we've been through that. We don't want you to go through that. We want to help you become what God's called you to do. But we've been where you've been, and it's possible to make it out of there. Yes, I know that there are many, right? I know that there are many have gone before us that have the ribbons and the medals and everything that shows the battles that they've been through, and I'm so grateful for them. 
It's why constantly in Scripture it tells us to remember, 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 remember. The same enemy that haunted them is the same enemy that's haunting you today. His plans have not changed, and it will not until Christ returns. He's going to continue to seek after you, not to be your best friend, but to kill you. And not just you, your children, your spouses, right? Your family, your friends, anything that comes against his kingdom. Do not fall into temptation just like Hezekiah and say, but look what all I've got. Look at my beautiful home. Look at my stuff. Look what I've accomplished. Look what I've gathered up. Would you do what Apostle Paul says, right? That he charged not only Titus and Timothy and other men, right? To pass on what they've received from other people, faithful men in, in the kingdom of God. That we would be more concerned about the crowns that will lay at the Father's feet than we'd ever be about our treasures here on earth. And I know as I say that, right, I know that that goes against the grain of everything that we have that's built inside of us from what this earth is telling us and what it's teaching us. But young men, we, you need great godly examples in church. We need to be the ones showing them. It doesn't just be with men, it's with women as well, young boys and girls all across our county need your wisdom, need your knowledge. They need your help. They need your prayers. They need your motherhood. They need your fatherhood. They need Jesus. So this morning, right, I want to I ask that question. Will your life count? And I know, right, I know that's much harder than you planned on hearing on Father's Day today, right? I'm praying. I'm praying in the seriousness of the way that God's word is that it's possible. It's very possible for us to fall victim to exactly of what the enemy lays trap for us every step of the way. And I'm praying right here in this moment that first and foremost, God, we're, we're trusting you with, with those that you've entrusted right here to us at Bethlehem. And I, Lord, I know, being a man, Lord, I, I know that we have a hard time with lots of things. We have a hard time accepting certain things in our lives, Lord. And I know that we want to be able to fix every issue and every problem. And, Lord, when we can't, that really, that really hurts our pride. Lord, I know that we want to be able to always be right. I know that we want to, to, be, to be right in every situation. And Lord, when we're not, that, that, that hurts our feelings. That hurts our pride. Lord, I, I know that we want to be providers. I know that we, we want to be uh, those that take care of our families. And Lord, in moments and times when we're not able to do that, Lord, I know that that, that hurts our pride. But Lord, I, I can't figure out why that why not being obedient to you doesn't, doesn't hurt our pride. Lord, for the, for the life of me, I can't, I can't figure out why that it, it doesn't press our hearts more when we don't do what you're calling us to do. So Lord, right here in this moment, I, I'm praying first and foremost for, for all men in this place that today we would take that stand. And that's regardless of whatever that our age is. That today, Lord, we would, we would surrender our lives and say, we're, here we are, God. We want to be what you're calling us to be. And I know that scares us to death because we like to control it. And we know if we surrender over our life to you that, Lord, we, we may have to start or stop doing things that we're maybe not prepared to do. And I want to say it's okay. God's got it. Let him worry about cleaning you up. You just, you just be obedient and giving him yourself. And then also, I want to I want to put a charge out there to you, ladies who who have a who have a husband at home. That today, that that you would look at him in a much different way. That today, that you would look at him and sense and see that he has a great responsibility not not just on his life, but on your life and on your children's life and on your grandchildren. 
that today you would look and see the weight that, that's pressed upon him. And that today you would begin to pray in such a way that, that God would equip him with everything that he needs to be. That God would help him in his obedience. That in any moment that he would fall or fall short, that it wouldn't be an opportunity for him to be condemned, but for you to come alongside and, and comfort and, and help and nourish and, and be able to say, God, help, help him in this time. For those of you that have lost, lost your spouse, that have lost your husband, that, that in these moments that, that you would realize that you would take uh, anything to, to have them back with you right now, for you to be able to have that, that man back at home with you. And I, I'm praying right now that you would begin to pray for the men of this church, that, that, that not only would their, their, their wives not, not, not neglect and, and not look past, but Lord, that, that they would be, be what you've called them to be. That children, that you would, you would begin to pray for moms and dads both. That knowing that their job is not easy, that it comes with great responsibility, and if you haven't figured it out yet, they, they don't have all the answers. moment church let today be a day that we truly begin that we truly begin to to operate in ways that that are pleasing and honoring to God we're going to be having a time where we're going to be celebrating in the Lord's Supper just right after our time here of of response and I want you to know that there are men and women across this room that would love to pray for you if you need that I want to encourage you to take time out to pray with your spouse, right? Pray with uh, your, your family, whether that means down here at the front or on the side or in the pew or in the back or whatever, but you, you don't truly miss this opportunity. The Lord, it, what's going to matter is not what the world is telling us by far. Our life should count, and it should count in ways that God says it counts. And I'm just praying if that's your desire today, right, that you would spend time seeking the Lord in these moments, right? So as we, as we have this time of response, I just ask for your obedience. And if there's some ways that we can help, then we want to. Please take advantage, right? You can stand in this moment in Jesus' name. Amen.